Fact number one. Disney and its humble beginnings. Born in Chicago on December 5, 1901, Walt Disney, the fourth of five children, moved with his family at the age of four to a farm in Marceline, Missouri. It was in Marceline, a small town community Disney remembered as an idyll, as an adult, that he first received encouragement to his growing interest in drawing, both from his aunt and a neighbor who was a retired doctor. However, Disney's father had difficulty supporting himself in Marceline and sold the farm in 1910. The next year, the family moved to Kansas City. There, Disney's father bought a newspaper, and for the next six years, Walt helped with deliveries working before and after school and on weekends. In 1917, his father sold the paper route and moved the family back to Chicago, where he was employed at a jelly and fruit juice company. Opt out of high school at 16, he was an inattentive student, but continued to draw and joined the Red Cross Ambulance Corps with the United States fighting World War I. Falsifying his birth certificate to meet the Corps' minimum age requirement of 17, he was sent to France in late 1918, shortly after the signing of the armistice that ended the fighting. Disney spent his time directing Red Cross officials and other assignments before being fired in 1919. Fact number two. Returning to Kansas City in 1919, he found occasional employment as a draftsman and Inca at commercial art studios, where he met up by works a young artist whose talents contributed greatly to Walt's early success. Dissatisfied with their progress, Disney and iWorks set up a small studio of their own in 1922 and acquired a second-hand motion picture camera with which they created one and two minute animated commercials for distribution to local theaters. They also did a series of animated cartoon sketches called Laughograms and a pilot film for a series of seven-minute cartoons that combined both live action and Alice in cartoon land animation. A New York movie distributor defrauded young producers and Disney was forced to file for bankruptcy in 1923. He moved to California to pursue a career as a cinematographer, but the unexpected success of the first Alice movie forced Disney and his brother Roy to reopen in Hollywood. Fact number three. With Roy as business manager, Disney relaunched the Alice series, urging iWorks to join him and help draw the cartoons. They invented a character named Oswald the Lucky Rabbit, contracted to distribute films for $1,500 apiece, and successfully launched their small business. In 1927, just before the transition to sound in movies, Disney and iWorks experimented with a new character, a cheerful, energetic, and mischievous mouse named Mickey. They planned two shorts, called Playing Crazy and Galloping Gaucho, to introduce Mickey Mouse. When the Jazz Singer, a theatrical movie starring popular singer Al Jolson, introduced a sonic novelty to movies, fully recognizing the possibilities of sound in animated films, Disney quickly produced a third Mickey Mouse cartoon featuring voices and music, titled Steamboat Willie, and scrapped the other two unvoiced animated films. When it appeared in 1928, Steamboat Willie was a sensation. The following year, Disney launched a new series titled Silly Symphonies with a picture titled The Skeleton Dance in which a skeleton rises from a graveyard and performs a grotesque, clattering dance to music based on classical themes. The original and briskly syncopated film made the series popular, but with rising costs due to more complex art and technical work, Disney's business was constantly under threat. Fact number four. The growing popularity of Mickey Mouse and his girlfriend Minnie, however, testifies to the audience's love of fantasies about small creatures with speech, skills, and personality traits of people. Disney himself was the voice for Mickey until 1947. This popularity led to the invention of other animal characters, such as Donald Duck, and the dogs Pluto and Goofy. In 1933, Disney produced the short film Three Little Pigs, which appeared in the midst of the Great Depression and took the country by storm. His treatment of the fairy tale of a little pig who works hard and builds his house of brick against the puffs and puffs of a fierce wolf responded to the need for fortitude in the face of economic disaster 
and her song Who's Afraid of the Big Bad Wolf was a happy mockery of adversity. It was during this difficult economic period in the early 1930s, Disney fully earned the recognition of viewers around the world, and its operations began to earn money despite the Great Depression. Fact number five. Disney had assembled a staff of creative young people by then, led by iWorks. Color was introduced in Silly Symphonies, Oscar-winning film Flowers and Trees, 1932, while other animal characters came and went in films such as The Grasshopper and the Ants, 1934, and The Turtle and the Hare, 1935. Roy franchised the Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck cartoons, watches, dolls, shirts, and t-shirts, and raised more wealth for the company. Walt Disney never rested or stood still. He has long thought about producing not only short films, but also full-length animated films. In 1934, he began work on a version of the classic fairy tale Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs 1937, a project that required great organization and coordination of studio talent, and a task for which Disney was exceptionally gifted. While in his films, he was actively involved in all stages of creation. He was mainly the coordinator and final decision maker, not the designer and artist. Snow White was widely acclaimed by critics and audiences as a funny and sentimental romance by animating essentially human characters in the characters of Snow White, the Prince, and the Evil Queen, and creating caricatures of the human characters in The Seven Dwarfs. Disney moved away from the scope and techniques of shorts, and thus proved the effectiveness of animation as a tool for feature-length stories. Fact number six. While Disney continued to make shorts featuring the anthropomorphic characters of its little animals, it has since worked on a wide variety of feature-length entertainment films, such as Pinocchio, Dumbo, and Bambi. Disney also produced a completely unusual and exciting film, his multi-segment and stylized fantasy 1940, in which cartoon characters and color patterns were animated to the music of Igor Stravinsky, Paul Dukas, Pyotr Lyak Tchaikovsky, and others. In 1940, Disney moved his company to a new studio in Burbank, California, abandoning the old factory it occupied at the beginning of development. The Disney animators' strike in 1941 was a major blow to the company. Many top animators quit, and it took years for the company to produce animated films that matched the quality of the early 1940s classics. Disney's involvement in films for the federal government during World War I helped the studio refine its methods of combining live action and animation. The studio's commercial films using this hybrid technique include The Reluctant Dragon, Saludos Amigos, The Three Cabalas, Make Mine Music, and Song of the South. The Disney studio, at that time, was founded as a large enterprise and began to produce a variety of entertainment films. One popular series, called True Life Adventures, featured nature-based films such as Seal Island, Beaver Valley, and The Living Desert. The Disney studio also began creating full-length animated romances such as Cinderella, Alice in Wonderland, and Peter Pan, and produced low-budget live-action films, including The Absent-Minded Professor. Mary Poppins, the Disney studio, was one of the first to foresee the potential of television as a popular entertainment medium, and produced programs directly for it. The series Zorro and Davy Crockett were very popular with children, and the weekly presentation known from several titles including Walt Disney's Wonderful World of Color, became a Sunday feature. The Mickey Mouse Club House, a variety show featuring teenage performers known as the Mouseketeers, was also successful. The culmination of Disney's career as a producer, however, was the release of Mary Poppins in 1964, which gained worldwide popularity. Fact number seven. In the early 1950s, Disney initiated plans to build a massive theme park near Los Angeles. When Disneyland opened in 1955, much of its penchant for nostalgic sentiments and fantasies was evident in its design and construction. It soon became a mecca for tourists from all over the world. A second Disney park, Walt Disney World, near Orlando, Florida, which was under construction at the time of his death, opened in 1971. 
Walt Disney's legacy, Disney's imagination and energy, whimsical humor, and gift for attunement to the vagaries of popular taste inspired him to create beloved entertainment for kids of all ages around the world. While some criticized his often sugary subject matter and accused him of creating a virtual stylistic monopoly in American animation that discouraged experimentation, his groundbreaking achievements cannot be denied. His achievements as a creator of entertainment for an almost unlimited audience and as an extremely